me show you why you need one of these products on hand if you are a car owner. Regardless of anything else in your world, why would one of these serve a purpose? This is what I call a first responder. The reality is this, life is a jungle especially as a car and especially out on the roads of the world. Along the way, you will incur some unwanted damage to your car in the form of abrasions, scuffs, scrapes, scratches, chips. The reason I call these a first responder is because it will be a simple way for you to either remove some damage to your car, diminish it, camouflage it, or assess it, or all of the above. If I had to pick a single product, what would it be? Well, in my world, for something that's a retail product, easy to get, economical, and is very effective, is the Meguiar's Scratch X. 2.0 more effective than these two because this represents what I call the winning balance between aggressive enough but not being too aggressive or it's going to do damage in the wrong hands but it's not so mild or it hasn't been dumbed down to the point where it's not effective these to me have been dumbed down water down point where they're just not as effective so what I want to do is show you two specific reasons why you need this in your life as a car owner miscellaneous scratches and damages and specifically because it's such a common problem is fingernail scratches underneath a door handle very common problem common complaint this product can handle both what you need to know about scratches is that every scratch is created differently it will in fact be unique I'm gonna show you a scratch in a moment but what I want to illustrate is a you need to use a microfiber cloth period doesn't mean you can't use something else it's just that this is the safest cloth that you can use when it comes to this type of work in my world all I use is microfiber cloths as a rule now there's different versions, meaning you can get a waffle weave, a double-sided textured one, but the point is, is they're all microfiber cloths. Here I have a pea-sized dollop of my Scratch X. Very straightforward when it comes to fingernail marks. You just rub, it's that easy. Which then leads me to an endless debate of, oh, you never go in a circular pattern because it will create swirl marks. Well, guess what? If I can create swirl marks in a circular pattern, you don't think I'll have the ability to create marks going horizontally or vertically? Well, logic would tell me yes, and experience confirms that. Let me also add this. If I have circular patterns in my paint, versus vertical or horizontal, would a circular pattern be any more difficult to remove or to fix than a horizontal or vertical? Coincidentally, I've heard some people go on record and say that horizontal or vertical marks are easier to remove than swirl marks or circular patterns, which is just not true. The real determinant in that is how deep did you put the scratches in? How deep are the scratches that you're trying to remove regardless of whether the pattern is circular or straight? Doesn't matter. So that I'm going to debunk that myth. With that said, I believe the reason for that is because people will reach for a product like this and the natural inclination is to do a circular pattern like that. Now if you choose the wrong cloth or a dirty cloth or you happen to choose a product that is aggressive enough, you can create a pattern that will reveal itself in a circular motion after the fact. So I get the reason why the debate is there because most people automatically go in in a circular pattern. It doesn't mean it's inherently wrong. It just means you need to pull back if you've created a pattern and say, oh, okay, something's wrong here. Either I'm using too much pressure or I have a polish or compound that's aggressive enough to create that or the cloth sucks. Maybe you've chosen a cloth that's abrasive by nature. That's why I recommend a microfiber cloth. In order to fix that, it's very simple. Just like you're going to scratch your way to success initially, now you're fixing something else and you can scratch your way to success that way also. So you just go in and you finesse it back and forth, up and down. You have to figure out what works in your world based on the car, the color, is the clear coat soft or hard? Because those in fact are determinants into the results that it will produce for you. So as a critical thinking species called the human species, you have the ability to pull back and apply strategy. So you go in light, you finesse it until you get the desired results. Let's deconstruct a scratch. This is a perfect specimen because it's very long in nature and every length or every section of the scratch is going to be a different depth. So this is what's called the fingernail test. Now the reason we do a fingernail test is to try to assess how deep it is. The deeper it is, the more of an edge you're gonna be able to catch. Now I can tell right here and right there, I can literally sink my nail into that valley of a scratch. And I can tell 
through visually inspecting as well as feeling with my fingernail that it's all the way through the clear coat, the color coat, the primer coat, it's all the way to the metal. That's gonna require touch up paint to fix and by fix, I mean literally what you're doing is just camouflaging it. I look at touch up paint as permanent makeup on a car, kind of like temporary makeup on a woman's face. It's meant to camouflage. It's just doing it at a permanent level. But in the meantime, we can clean up this scratch or we can at least see how effective this product is at cleaning up that scratch knowing that it cannot be removed 100% because this has gone through the paint. What we wanna do is two things. One is we're cleaning out the scratch because what happens is the car gets scratched, it will induce some dirt into it, which will create that line. The line has also damaged the paint in that area, which is now changing the reflective surface. So we're trying to remove the dirt and we're trying to abrade down through these abrasives the edges to the scratch itself that way the light will reflect off it differently and the scratch will appear to have disappeared or at least diminished greatly so those are the two goals is to remove the dirt and to wear down the edges of the scratch and if there's just simply transfer in the form of dirt on the paint then it's going to eliminate that area completely which in this situation has now i know if i was to take the right lighting in the right angle i could scrutinize this i would still be able to see a permanent line where the damage is in fact permanent to go a next step further i would have to take some either a buffer with an aggressive pad. I could use some sandpaper, sand that away first, and then polish it back to life. That would be the next step. But right there was the winning balance for most people because my eye cannot pick up the scratch any longer. And that took all of what, uh, 10 seconds of rubbing with a single product, a single tool, and bam, we're good to go. Which another reason why I think every car owner should have this stuff on hand. So let's attack this area. And I know this area here leading up to the big damage is even more significant than this one. Was. So I know that my results will be a little more limited or maybe I will just have to go in with repeat applications and wear this down more and more. And when I say wear this down, what I mean is the edges of that scratch and cleaning out the dirt and wearing down the edges. Now there's still some more visible line here, but I dramatically diminished that and removed it and erased that. Call it whatever you want. And to me, this is the winning balance for most people. Here we are up close. The scratch is completely removed outside the edges here. And then you can see a subtle scratch still remaining right through here. But as you pull back under normal viewing distances, it almost completely disappears. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. Here we have our second test model car. Chose this Audi because back bumper is notorious for getting all kinds of scrapes and scratches on it as people load their stuff in and out of the car. It represents a whole cornucopia of opportunity because there's so many different types of scratches that I encountered on this. Here we have our two products once again. So I'm gonna pull you in, I'm gonna examine. Just as a note, you do not have to test every scratch with the fingernail test and hyper scrutinize it. This is what I call the first responder. You just go in with one of these products and it will determine very quickly the depth and severity of the scratch itself. And that will determine if you need to take additional steps moving forward to fix or diminish the scratch. I'm using just a little dollop, about a pea size. Just in this one little area here, we've got, and this is based on experience, by the way, I can look at these very quickly and come to a very quick determination as to what's going on. This, to me, is a little bit of transfer. Now, just so you know, transfer is when two parts collide. It's when they change DNA. How about that? So this was hit by something. It left a little mark. It could be plastic, could be paint, who knows? Here's some scratches. Now, typically what happens is scratches will occur when the car is dirty. Often what you're seeing is, in fact, damage to the paint. The reason it changes color many times because it has skidded the dirt into the material. So you may not be able to remove the scratch a hundred percent. This will allow you to clean the dirt out of the scratch itself. If I was to examine this under the right lighting, I would in fact still see that there's some damage here. But now I've just cleaned the dirt out of it. And now under normal viewing distances and lighting, you cannot see the scratch. I simply go around and I treat these individual scratches. See how quickly that came off? because it was in fact transfer. This I know is scratch with some dirt in it. So I'm gonna use this. See right there, you can still see it. That transfer came off that quickly, but this is still clinging to life. I'm gonna use a little bit more and I'm gonna go back and forth until I have the desired results. Here we have a deeper scratch. Once again, experience dictates that 
I know this is going to be some permanent damage, but I want to show you, I can tell that this is a common problem where the hatch came up and it rubbed against the garage door. So I'm just going to go across this and I can literally feel the damaged paint through this cloth. So I know that these results with this just single product is going to be very minimal. This is where I would have to bust out a little bit of sandpaper, uh, finesse it very carefully because it's an edge and then fill it in with some touch up paint. Here we have some more scratches. Once again, I'm just gonna go in pretty hot. And if you have a black car, you will have to apply some more caution because black is going to reveal your pattern if you create one more than a light colored car like this one. So this is what you need to do. You need to first focus on the scratch and if you're cautious and full of fear, go in light, go back and forth, check your result. Now if you start seeing a pattern that you've created because maybe your cloth isn't as good as this one, there's many ways you can create a pattern. Don't go into freak out mode. You take some uh, this stuff, wow, brain fade, and you lightly go back and forth and you finesse it and you wipe it, you check your results, you go back in if you need to finesse it some more and that's where you can start if you're overly fearful. Now, because in most cases I know what I'm doing, I can go in hot because I can fix any mistake that I happen to make, which is gonna be literally nothing with a product like this, it's that safe. But I do accept that not all clear coats are created equal. There truly are clear coats that are softer than others. So your car will be unique, unique to your situation. So this is where you can test the waters, go in softly, and then graduate to more and more pressure until you have the desired results. Once you've rubbed it sufficiently enough and now you're beginning to question yourself, you can feel and see if there's some divot or line, something that you can catch a fingernail with. So this little mark right here, which is probably not even showing up that well, I can catch a little edge to it. So I know that I'm gonna be limited with this. I can keep going back in and rubbing more and more because what I would want to do next is try to wear down any edges to that scratch. If I can wear down those edges, which is often the only thing you're gonna be able to do, then the light will reflect differently on that scratch and it will camouflage it because you have worn all the hard edges off of the scratch. So that was a better, it's a better result. It's part of a, the better winning combination. Also, if you think or you're in fear of wearing down your clear coat and going through the clear coat or burning an edge by hand, you would literally have to be built like a gorilla and have that kind of strength to force a burn into the edge with this stuff. So that's just a non-issue, unless of course you decide to sit here for about a week and just rub till your hand fell off. Then of course, I suppose I could probably do it. So you just go around and you just treat these individual scratches. And when I'm done, I will have cleaned up this bumper dramatically to create a more desired result. With all that said, in 10,000 words or less, this is why I think you need at least one of these products on hand. You might already have one collecting dust in your garage. Bust it out, see how you can quickly improve the appearance of your car by simply removing and polishing away these miscellaneous scratches and scuff marks. If I had to pick, like I said, between one of these products, it would be the Meguiar's. It represents a winning balance between aggressive and mild. Very user friendly, very easy to get, very economical. Uh, always refer to the show more box below every video. There's going to be links that will take you to my website for a greater, more comprehensive description. And that's how you can help support me and my efforts because if you shop through the Amazon links, I in fact get a little bit of a commission. So thank you in advance. We'll see you on the next video don't forget to subscribe and don't forget when you subscribe to hit the little bell button next to it that will alert you whenever I upload the next latest and greatest video we'll see you next time in the next video and you simply go around your car with your microfiber there's our ambient noise for the day the big low-flying helicopter like, what is he doing aside from messing up every other person's video in the moment. Of course, no video of mine would be complete without some unwanted ambient noise, in this case, a delivery truck.